What's going on YouTube? My name is Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy, fashion and fragrance guy. On this channel, I primarily talk about fragrances, but I also jump into talking about a little bit of men's lifestyle, uh, tips on style and grooming and things of that nature as well, because at the end of the day, I want to just share the knowledge that I have so that guys can go out there every day and look and smell their best. That's what this channel is really about at the end of the day. So if you're a person that's interested in that kind of content, Make sure you hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon as well. So anytime a new video is uploaded on this channel, you'll be one of the first people to get notified. Guys, I'm going to jump into uh, ranking a fragrance uh, house or brand um, that I haven't really talked about as much on the channel. The designer fragrance brand of Paco Rabanne, specifically the One Million line. Um, I have six fragrances from the One Million collection and I wanted to kind of jump into kind of ranking uh, these fragrances and give my commentary on each of these fragrances. Um, I have so many fragrances in my collection now that I probably, of course, will never be able to do a singular review on all of these fragrances. So I think doing a, uh, a list like this give me a chance to kind of give my opinion and my, uh, my take on some of these fragrances. And, you know, that's what we're going to be jumping into today. So if you want to hear how I rank my one million uh, fragrance collection and you don't want to miss this, you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. The Bowtie Fragrance Guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. We're going to jump into this list. Now, first and foremost, I do not have every single flanker from the One Million Collection. All right. I have the ones that I was interested in purchasing. Now, I did find out that there is a new One Million flanker uh, that just hit the market. Now, they already released one earlier this year. Uh, which was 1 million Royal, and now they've released a 1 million Oud fragrance. I think it was kind of like a Dubai exclusive, so there's another one out there. They already had one released earlier this year, and now they've released another one. So, you know, not sure if I'm interested in getting my hands on that one or not, but just so you know, there is one out there. So out of the six fragrances that I have, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my ranking. Starting with the one that comes in the number six spot, and it's the most recent release. This is One Million Royal. Love the bottle because I love that red uh, plaque that goes around the one here on this bottle. Um, what you get on this fragrance right here is cardamom, lavender, violet leaves, benzoin, and sage. Now, this fragrance is so different from the rest of the fragrances from the One Million collection. The primary thing that I feel like I have an issue with is I don't, it's kind of like a blah fragrance to me. There's really nothing about it. Most of the other one, one million fragrances I have, they perform really well. So that's something that I've come to expect from a one million flanker, performance. Uh, that first two hours or so of most of the fragrances from my one million, one million collection are really, really strong. And this one from the opening spray is kind of like, Blah. You know, it doesn't really jump off the skin. It's really, it's really close. Uh, so it's really close to the skin from, you know, within the first 15 minutes or so. So it's, that was the first issue I took with it. But then there's nothing wrong with being different when you talk about scent profiles, but it just doesn't do anything for me. When I put it on my skin, again, I keep using the word blah, because to me that was, that's what really describes this fragrance. Now, when it starts to dry down and the lavender kind of kicks in, uh, that kind of ambery dry down with the benzoin, uh, the sage and stuff like that, it, it it starts to smell better. But again, it's just not it's not really much to talk about with this one. And I keep trying it, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe my opinion will change one day. But so far, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. So that's why it's in the sixth spot for me. Um, Again, it's kind of a just okay fragrance in my opinion. So the sixth spot goes to one million royal. 
So coming in in the fifth spot, I think this fragrance was released somewhere around 2019 to maybe 2020. One Million Parfum. Now I have a big bottle of this because I picked it up on a, a trip to Miami and I, this is what they had. I got a good deal on it. But this one features notes of tuberose as a salty ambergris with this labdanum, pine, and mono oil, which that mono oil smells like coconut. So that's where that coconut sensation comes from, comes from with this one. A little bit more, if you think about it, uh, florals from any, any of the other flankers in this particular uh, line. But I really like this one. Uh, great on projection uh, when you first spray it. And that coconut and tuberose combination. Some people were off put by that because coconut and, you know, tuberose you find a lot of times in female uh, marketed fragrances. So definitely more unisex than most of the other fragrances from this uh, collection, but I didn't mind it. It's not bad. Uh, it kind of comes off as a almost a more summery fragrance. Again, you have this salty kind of ambergris thing going on with this, and then you throw in uh, the tuberose, and then you throw in the that coconut kind of uh, smell that you get from the mono oil in here. And it kind of gives off that tropical vibe, almost like suntan lotion, if you will. But ultimately, again, it does smell good. It performs great. And if I'm ranking these again, you know, it's good enough to come in in the fifth spot. It was worth the purchase to me. I'll put it that way. So in the fifth spot is this one right here. One million puff off. All right, now coming in in the fifth spot, I want to say this fragrance was released last year. Don't quote me on any of these release dates, but I think it was released sometime around last year. This is One Million Elixir. So Paco Rabanne got, out, got in on the Elixir craze. This one features notes of apple, rose, osmanthus, vanilla, and tonka bean. Love it. There are definitely traces of the, traces of the original One Million in here. I love that apple opening. The osmanthus is really, really creamy, kind of milky. Um, in this fragrance, gives the fragrance some texture. Of course, it gets sweet as it dries down, as most one million fragrances do. Uh, one of my favorite notes, of course, uh, tonka bean. So, love this one, man. Like apple rose with that creaminess. Love this fragrance. Really, really love this one. But of course, the top three are some bangers, man. Um, a lot of fragrance brands now are doing that elixir thing and like I said, one million decided to get in on it. Not surprised by that. And uh, they did a good job with this one. So the fourth spot goes to this one right here. One million elixir. All right, now coming in, in the third spot, it's the original one million. This fragrance is so classically good, man. It features notes of blood orange, mint, cinnamon, rose, uh, amber uh, is in here as well. And that rose is kind of the signature of this fragrance. Um, People often talk about this fragrance and say it, it kind of has a playful sweetness, and I can kind of see where they're coming from with that. But I just really, really enjoy this fragrance. You know, um, that's what this thing is about at the end of the day, man. What do you like? What smells good to you? And I really love the way that the original One Million smells. You know, that opening again, that rose combination in here with that, um, that sweetness from the uh, blood orange in the opening. Then you have that kind of minty vibe in there. Again, just... Everything comes together really nicely here uh, to make one of those fragrances that are well-received and mass appealing. Uh, most people uh, that uh, go into a Macy's or a Dillard's or whatever the case may be and put this to their nose, they're gonna wanna put, you know, take it home. They wanna, gonna wanna bottle this. Very popular fragrance, kind of like the Versace Eros, is the Dylan Blues, the Dior Sauvages of the world. I think this fragrance kind of has that same effect as it pertains to how popular it is because to most people, it just smells freaking phenomenal, and it is what it is. So I like it. Um, that's why it comes in at the third spot. This is the original One Million. Now coming in at the number two spot is One Million Lucky. One Million Lucky. They hit a home run with this one, man. Uh, plum, hazelnut, honey, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver. Man, what can I say about this fragrance? It's such a... Uh, sexy, kind of alluring, seductive fragrance. I think it's kind of playing on that whole lucky thing, like getting lucky, uh, if you will. Um, but I love this one, man. They feature a note of plum in this. So that plum, hazelnut, and honey thing is really what this fragrance is about at the end of the day. You know, again, honey, plum, very seductive, you know, kind of romantic notes, if you will. 
And of course that hazelnut just really um, ties that whole accord together, making, in my opinion, this fragrance really what it's about. Um, I talk a lot about uh, date night fragrances on this channel. I still think that Dior, I meant not Dior, um, Dolce & Gabbana, the one, Eau de Parfum is one of the best date night designer fragrances on the planet. And this is right up there with Dolce & Gabbana, the one. This is right up there. When you talk about designer fragrances that are great for a date night that really draw people in, well, me and Lucky uh, really does the trick. So it's in the number two spot, phenomenal release. Thankfully, now I have a 200 ml bottle of this as a backup. Thanks to my man, Ryan, that sent that to me. I appreciate that. Uh, so I have this in my collection for the rest of my life, and I don't mind that at all. Number two spot goes to one million lucky. And my real day ones know what this number one fragrance is going to be. If you've been rocking with me for a long time, you know how much I love this fragrance. I'm probably going to make it my scent of the day. Um, one million Privé. And man, why do the good die young? <laughs> what I mean by that, of course, this fragrance has been discontinued. I love everything about this fragrance. Um, not even, we can go down the road of nostalgia. This reminds me of, as I refer to it as the good old days of being in this fragrance community, man. Um, just reminds me of the great times. I think it was released around 2018. <sighs> man, such a good fragrance. Unfortunately, again, it's been discontinued, but I love everything about it. The, the kind of bronze uh, presentation that it comes in. You got cinnamon, blood orange, tobacco, myrrh, tonka bean in it. Phenomenal fragrance. It smells like apple pie. You know, I did a video of the top 10 fragrances that smell like apple pie because there's quite a few of them out there. But if you're talking about designer fragrances, this is the best if you're looking for that kind of scent DNA. Look at that golden uh, amber colored juice in there. Just love this fragrance, man. I love everything about it. You know, that cinnamon tobacco combination with that kind of sweet resinous myrrh in the top of being dry down. Just to die for, man. I do have a backup bottle of this. Um, so with all the fragrances I have in my collection, this is another one I should be able to have for the rest of my life. And I am so glad that I'll always have access to this fragrance. What a gem this is, man. Check it out if you can get your hands on a bottle of it without selling a kidney. I think it's worth doing so. From the brand of Paco Rabanne, the number one one million fragrance is one million prepay. But that is it, guys. That is my time. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, how would you rank these fragrances? I would love to hear your ranking down in the comment section. And as always, I sincerely appreciate you guys' time and attention to these videos. I know you don't have to watch, but you do. And I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to take a few moments to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you're sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use the information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good. And of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.